Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to talk about relationships and performance. Specifically, I want to talk about limited relationships and compare the performance of limited relationships against regular relationships. You probably already know what a limited relationship is. If it's not, then we have already talked about it in uh, articles and videos and you will find the links uh, in the article. So just go there, take a look, just to get a feeling about the important semantic differences between a regular relationship and a limited one. But specifically for this video, I want to focus on performance only. So we are going to evaluate the performance of uh, relation or regular relationships and then we force the relationship to be a limited one by making it a many-to-many -many cardinality relationship and we perform different measures in order to understand what is the price of using limited relationships as you are going to discover the price is very high so the wise dax developer uses many-to-many uh, -many cardinality relationships and limited relationships only in the few cases where it is really really important but the good part about the article and the video is that you also learn some details about best practices and how to uh, measure performance of uh, your model and your DAX code. Let's get started. This is our regular Contoso model, but this time I'm not interested in the entire model. I'm mainly interested in sales and customer. Then we will introduce product later, but for now, let, for now let's just focus on sales and customer. Sales and customers are linked through a regular relationship. Many side, one side, regular relationship. The reason why the relationship is regular, probably the type of relationship that you always use in your models, is because the two tables are in the same data island. They are stored in the same engine. In this case, they are both in VertiPack, in import mode. Uh, and in this case, the relationship is regular. If the two tables were stored in different engines, maybe one in Direct Query and the other one in VertiPack, then the relationship would become limited. There is also another way to create limited relationships, that is by using the many-to-many -many cardinality options in the same engine. So if I enable many-to-many -many cardinality on this relationship, it will become a limited one. And to do that, you just go to cardinality, make it many-to-many, -many, save it, and now you see that the two tables are still linked through a relationship, but there are gaps, one here and one here. These two tiny gaps in the relationship indicate that now the relationship is a limited one. Our goal is to evaluate the difference between a regular and a limited relationship. So we will execute different queries, enabling bidirectional mode, enabling many-to-many -many cardinality and disabling it from time to time in order to uh, appreciate the difference in terms of speed between one type of relationship and the other one. So let's go back to regular relationship now, many to one, save it. And as I said, we need to execute a query that scans sales and group by customer. A query that produces a result like the one you see on the screen is just perfect. I'm computing the sales amount using columns in the sales table and group it by country. Country is in customer, therefore the engine needs to use this relationship to link sales and customer. Let's see, I have uh, this model that's already connected to my Power, model, Power BI model and in DAX Studio server timings is enabled, I can just run. This query groups by customer country and computes the sales amount. If I look at the server timings, it takes 3 milliseconds, so it is very fast, 0 milliseconds of storage engine CPU. If I go back and enable, enable, uh, no, from here, many to many, I save it, remember it was 3 milliseconds, I run it, and now it runs in 9 milliseconds. So it looks like it took a lot longer. But the thing is, a difference of 6 milliseconds between two different executions is absolutely normal. Right now, my computer is doing a lot of different things. So it might be the case that it's, doing, uh, it's following another thread or it's executing, executing some task. And a few milliseconds of difference basically mean nothing. If you, we want to analyze performance, we need the server timings to be in the range of seconds. 7 seconds, 10 seconds, or 
one minute, uh, these are good timings to analyze performance because uh, when the time becomes so large, then the noise introduced by the computer basically disappears. That is why I'm not going to use this model because this only contains a few thousand rows in the sales table. Uh, rather, I'm going to connect to a much larger model that I stored in Tabula uh, because there, as you see, things are very different and much, much clearer. Let's take a look first at the number of rows in this model. This model in the sales table contains 1.4 billion rows. So it is way, way larger. And uh, because it is larger, it will be slower. Therefore, it will make the difference re really more evident. Remember, I'm interested in uh, analyzing the time required to use the relationship. So the baseline, the first number that I need to gather is just the time required to scan sales only. So I just summarize column and I compute just the value of sales amount. I need server timings to be enabled. And as soon as it starts, we run the query and we see what happens. Just scanning the sales table takes around 143 milliseconds. But this is the waiting time. This is the time required to produce the result. What I'm really interested in is the storage engine CPU because on this machine I have a lot of cores. So with the parallelism of around 50, 6.8, 6 let's say seven seconds of execution time are produced in 143 milliseconds. But the number that I want to reduce, the number that I want to monitor is this one. This is uh, the amount of CPU power needed in order to answer the query. Let's save this result. And this is scan only. Next step, we group by customer country. So we group by customer country. Now this query will produce, uh, will still scan sales, but it now needs to use the relationship. We run it and it's gonna be slower. How much slower? Well, we don't know, but now we have a number. 14 seconds, around 15 seconds. So 14,000 milliseconds. Let's save this value too. And this is a group by country regular relationship. This tells me the price of uh, the relationship. The relationship, using the relationship, it takes uh, 15 seconds. Not using the relationship, it takes uh, 6.8, let's say 7 seconds. So basically using the relationship doubles the execution time. If this looks bad to you, well, welcome to the real world. It's not that it is bad. It is the price you need to pay in order to use a relationship. Be mindful I'm grouping by customer country. Customer is a large table. If we look at the VertiPack analyzer, customer contains around 1.8 million rows. If instead of using customer, we were using a smaller relationship, let's say product brand, and I group by product brand, I run it and I look at the server timings, it takes 10 seconds rather than 15. So it's only three seconds more than just the scan. The size of the relationship matters. The smaller the relationship, the better. We are using a large relationship because we want to uh, enlarge the problem. We want to see large numbers so that it will be easier to understand the differences between one type of relationship and the other one. However, let's go back to customer country. Uh, customer country. And we know we ex execute the code. It's 14 seconds. Now it's time to enable the many-to-many uh, -many cardinality, which I cannot do with Power BI. I need to use Tabular Editor because uh, this model is too large and it is stored in uh, analysis services. So the relationship between customer and uh, key is not many-to-one. We make it many-to-many. -many. Then we save it. We refresh the model. Uh, where is refresh model automatic? It's going to be very fast because uh, it basically needs to destroy uh, the relationship. And now we can run the same query again. 
you can already tell that it's slower because it takes in, it's taking longer. But how much lo slower? Here it is. It now takes 4 seconds to return the result and 148,000 milliseconds. Let's save this number too. And this is group by country. Limited relationship. Now, look at these numbers. Four seconds of storage engine CPU, which uh, is basically 148,000, then because of parallelism, they are used to four seconds. But it is 10 times slower compared with the regular relationship. Not only this. If you consider that uh, with the regular relationship, it was 15 seconds, but the overhead of the relationship was that it doubled the time. So it went from 7 seconds, no relationship, to 15 seconds. So 7 seconds were added just because of the relationship. Now, just because of the relationship, we, ha we add 142,000 milliseconds. So around 14 seconds. The overhead of uh, the relationship is much larger than the time required to scan the table. So that gives you an idea of how expensive limited relationships and many-to-many -many cardinality relationships are. They basically multiply by 20 the execution time of uh, your uh, model. That is a serious issue, even because uh, you do not pay the price only once. Depending on how many measures and how many scans are required to produce the result, you will need to pay a price that is larger and larger. If you compute just one measure, you multiply by 20. But if you compute two, three, four, five different measures, then the execution time skyrockets. And I want to show you this by um, using a different uh, piece of code. Instead of computing just sales amount, let's do calculate sales amount and we compute that for customer whose gender is a male. I'm going to use two measures now. The two measures will be very similar. Let's call sales for male and sales no, to female. Two and that should be female. A female. What is the difference between this query and the previous one? Well, the previous one only computed sales amount, so it was only one measure. Now we have two measures, one that says, oh, I want the sales amount but only for male people, and I want the sales amount only for female people. So two measures. And the big question is, does this require two scans or only one scan of the sales table? The answer is, it depends. The engine uses a, an optimization that is, called as, is known as fusion. If it knows that it still needs to compute the sales amount, one for male and the other one for female, it can actually group by the gender and then select the value for male and the value for, male, for female in order to produce only one scan. But this optimization is active only if you use uh, uh, regular relationships. So we need to go here, transform that into a regular relationship again. We save it and then we refresh the model. Again, it's going to be very fast. Uh, let's execute now the code that scans uh, two different, uh, that requires two scan. We run it and uh, because of fusion, it takes a bit longer because now it needs to scan uh, sales. Let me take a look at the XM SQL code. And you see that it groups by gender and it groups by country. Then it computes the sum of quantity times net price. So it's using just a join, but it executes only one scan of the fact table. If, uh, uh, let's save this. And this is multiple measures regular relationship. So it is slower than the, just the grouping by country, but 
mm, it's computing multiple, it's scanning only once the table. We can run it just a couple of times, but I do not expect this number to change by a lot because it needs to perform grouping by two columns, so the number of rows, of course, is larger. You see, 36, 40,000 uh, milliseconds, uh, that's the range we, we are looking at. Now, let's make it, a, uh, let's enable many-to-many uh, -many cardinality. If I go here and make it many-to-many, -many, then I save it and refresh the model. And then we run it again. What happens is that now, because the relationship is a limited one, is no longer a regular relationship, the engine will no longer let fusion kick in. And what happens is that now I have multiple scans. You see, I have one scan of the fact table, another scan of the fact table. This one, the first one, is only computing value for male, and the second one is computing for female. And in this case, now we have two scan of the fact table. Of course, in a regular report, you will have multiple uh, measures being computed for the same subset. So in this case, the difference is not that uh, relevant from a, from a uh, percentage point of view. This is uh, not as large, but if you look at the absolute value, it is actually much slower. Let's save this value, Ctrl F9. You see that the difference between this execution is this execution is uh, 20,000 milliseconds. So the more you have uh, in terms, the, the more measures you will have to compute, maybe you have distance count and other type of measure, and the worse it will become. And it's also relevant to know that the degree of parallelism is also reduced. So the engine is not making the best use of uh, the CPU because of uh, the multiple scans that need to be executed. I'm not going to into detail of uh, why the engine needs to execute multiple scans. You will find further details uh, in the articles that are linked uh, when we start talking about limited relationships. Conclusions are quite simple. Limited relationships, many-to-many uh, -many cardinality relationships are expensive. They are at least 10 times slower compared to regular relationships, and they can become worse in case you compute multiple measures on the same table because some optimizations cannot kick in and that is a serious issue. You want the relationship to be the best possible because uh, relationships are used whenever you scan a table and group it by another column. Therefore, you want the fastest relationship possible, which is a regular one-to-many relationship. Enabling many-to-many -many cardinality or limited relationship just because is not a smart idea. You should limit uh, the use of uh, limited relationship only in the very special cases where they are really, really needed. And even in that case, pay attention to the cardinality of the tables involved in the relationship. The table on the one side needs to be small. By small, I mean thousands of rows are fine. Hundreds of thousands, uh, that's already borderline. Millions of rows, that's a serious problem. On the many side, it can be as big as you want. On the one side, it needs to be small. With all that said, check your relationship in your model and enjoy DAX. Mm -hmm.